What kid doesn't love Lunchables? For decades, the prepackaged assortment of snacks have become a childhood staple for generation after generation. But Consumer Reports says Lunchables contain troubling levels of lead and sodium. Take a look. And joining us now, we have Kevin Loria from Consumer Reports. Kevin, I remember back being a kid, I mean, everybody wanted these. You wanted to feel like a chef stacking your ham and cheese on a cracker. Uh, it's going to break some families' hearts. What did you guys uncover? Yeah, I get it. I remember that, too. Um, so our experts looked at 12 different lunch and snack kits, and they found they were looking for various contaminants and also to look at the nutritional information. And they found lead or cadmium in every kit that they tested. And it's not that the levels were particularly high. There was nothing kind of acutely toxic. But even low levels of heavy metals can contribute to cumulative exposure, which can lead to health problems over time. They also found phthalates or phthalate replacement chemicals, chemicals found in plastic, which have been linked to a number of health issues in nearly every kit that they looked at. Um, and again, these didn't exceed any regulatory threshold. But again, you know, a lot of experts think that the regulations on levels of phthalates need to be more strict, that we see health effects at much lower levels. And so I think that those are important things. I think that from a nutritional perspective, we're looking at these foods that are very highly processed. They're packed full of additives and they've got a lot of sodium. You know, a kid could be getting a quarter to a half of their daily sodium intake from one of these kits, which is a lot for a small meal. And it just kind of puts them in a bad place. So yeah, absolutely. it's very unfortunate. <laughs> so Kevin, this doesn't just impact parents who pack their children's lunches, but also the parents of students who eat school provided lunches. You're getting this from both sides. What should parents do with this information? Right. So there are now a couple of versions of Lunchable kits that are uh, that can be used in certain school lunch programs. And basically, you know, what our experts looked at with these programs or with these foods is they saw that there have been some slight modifications made to them that, you know, might in theory qualify them for these programs. But our experts say that they're really not healthier. You know, they might have more protein, but they've got a lot more sodium than the store-bought versions. And so what they would say is that, you know, as tempting as it is and as convenient as it might be, you know, these are not something that kids should be eating regularly. And having these as part of school lunch programs isn't providing great messaging for kids or parents. And what can you tell us about the evidence about what high sodium or high <clears throat> processed foods, the impact that they can have on young children? Right. So even young kids can uh, experience hypertension or prehypertension from eating uh, foods that are very high in sodium. Kids with high sodium diets are about 40 percent more likely to develop hypertension than kids who eat low sodium diets. So kind of when we look at kind of the, the health problems that kids face and kind of the long term health out, outlook for, you know, something you start eating early in life, you know, it's important to start healthy habits as early as you can, if possible. You know, and more and more, we've also seen that with these highly processed foods that aside from the nutritional component, there seems to be something about them that a lot of experts have linked highly processed foods, foods with these industrial ingredients to a lot of serious health effects. And so again, it's something that really should be limited. All right, Kevin, thank you so much for your insight and your reporting. We, we appreciate your time.